Uh, my name's Karen Tam and I'm a visual artist uh, based living from Montreal. Uh, and my work uh, ranges from installation sculptures, uh, 2D work, um, so that means like drawings or uh, sometimes paintings, and usually deals with the the way that Chinese culture in the community uh, has been interpreted or misrepresented in the West, and I'm specifically looking at North American um, or, or the diasporic Chinese community. Um, I've, I've been fascinated by uh, chinoiserie uh, and, and you know, historical forms of chinoiserie as well as the more contemporary sort of interpretation of, of what Chinese art, or, or Asian, I should say, because all, all the like East Asian, South Asian, um, Southeast Asian have all been kind of conflated into one kind of Asian-ness in a way. Um, and so with my art, I try to interrogate and to challenge those kinds of assumptions. Now, when it comes to uh, like consumer goods and products and things that we see in popular culture, um, you know, one can in a way dismiss them. Like, well, you know, it, it's, it doesn't, it's not that harmful, but it does, it is. Um, and I'm sure you agree, like, it is like all of that adding up over the decades or the centuries where, um, say, the art or the culture or the objects um, are revered, right? Except, on the other hand, um, the people are either missing, you know, from the, from the dialogue or um, they're looked down upon, they're discriminated against. So there's this, um, in a way, like, it's hypocritical, right? And so basically, like, I guess in one sentence, it's like exotic, exoticizing a culture um, through objects. Um, in, in my practice over the past 20 years, I've been looking at cultural spaces spaces where there are cultural encounters. So uh, you know, ranging from Chinese Canadian restaurants or Chinese American restaurants uh, to um, Chinatown souvenir shops, you know, from the 1930s or um, uh, artists, uh, Chinese uh, artist studio uh, in 1930s Victoria and who was friends with Emily Carr. And then uh, like most recently um, I curated uh, an ex a group exhibition called Who's Chinatown um, in North Vancouver. And that kind of developed from a, res a research residency, a curatorial residency I did with the Griffin Art Projects last, uh, last March. And originally um, the project was related um, in a way to kind of looking at the, the representation of cultural spaces, specifically diasporic Chinese spaces. Um, and then just, you know, with with <laughs> the, the pandemic <laughs> and all the anti-Asian racism um, that really you know, reared its head um, last year uh, that, you know, I started thinking about Chinatowns my Chinatown, so Montreal's Chinatown, and then um, I'd been doing research into uh, artworks th that represent, that depicted Chinatown. Uh, so I start with Montreal, um, that were, are available um, in the collections or the archives um, of different institutions. And, and then just kind of starting to think about the art history, uh, what it is, what could be, what is art history of Chinatown? So not just Montreal's Chinatown, but across Canada. How has, how have Chinatowns been represented in, in, in various art forms, photography, drawings, uh, paintings, uh, sculptures, installations and such. Um, and, and kind of based on that research and looking at, you know, the different um, archives and collections, there weren't, in terms of hi historical works, there basically wasn't any um, by Chinese Canadians. Um, 
me. So, but I was interested too, though, how um, I guess the white, <laughs> the white male artist um, of the 1900s, or, or, or white female artists, because I, I did include um, Emily Carr um, work, how they represented Chinatown, and it was really when you compare that to. Um, works by Chinese Canadians like like Yu Cho Chao who was the first Chinese uh, Canadian photography working in um, photographer working in Vancouver's Chinatown like in the early uh, 20th century um, to you know uh, artists like um, Paul Wong also from Vancouver Mary Sui Wang from Montreal um, you could you can see that those early representations were really from the outsider's gaze, you know, the outside gaze into Chinatown. And so I wanted to counteract that with, you know, uh, the, the contemporary artist, um, Morris Lem in Toronto, um, and his series of, um, basically it's called Tong and Guy, um, and, and looking at all the Chinatowns in North America and, and taking photographs, documenting them over a number of years. Um, so in a way, I wanted to also bring together a possible like art history um, and to, it, through this project, bring in a way community together. So it was like a project that was really for our community. Um, and uh, also it was, um, it was wonderful to discover, you know, uh, other artists I, I had heard, like I had heard of, but didn't, wasn't familiar with their work, but also to find, um, say, some of the earliest Chinese Canadian artists whose work that we don't, we haven't uncovered yet, hasn't been found, but um, folks like um, uh, Eugene Bond, uh, who went by the name of Eugene Bond, um, and, and we only know about him because uh, he was one of the two Asian Canadian models at the Vancouver School of Art in the 19, I think, uh, in the early 1930s. So th th that's just an example. I think that even though we live outside of Chinatown, and I mean, there was this uh, move in a lot of Chinatowns that you know, the idea is that if you became more successful, or your goal was to to move outside of Chinatown, to move outside the, in the um, using the term like outside of the ghetto of mm -hmm. Chinatown. Um, but I've noticed that there's been a move, not just here but elsewhere too, of in a way returning to Chinatown, not not necessarily returning to live, but. Um, and, it, and more than just like going back to Chinatown to like for dim sum, for bubble tea, for, you know, like you said, for consuming, for consumption. Um, there, it's, it's returning to see how we can support um, see our, our, our seniors who, who are living in Chinatown um, in, in senior housing uh, or to, to support our community, to, to support the survival and growth in a way, um, perhaps like healthy, de healthy development. I, I don't know if that's like an oxymoron. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I, I'm just kind of thinking also, um, I, I used to live in Chicago and I worked for um, a year or two at the Chinese American Service League, um, which provided, I guess it, in a way it's, it's similar to the um, uh, Chinese Family Services of Greater Montreal. Um, so it's very similar to that. Um, and what I loved about Chicago's Chinatown was it was live. It was a living Chinatown. I mean, all all our all our Chinatowns, I should say, are living Chinatowns. But Chicago's Chinatown, living in the way that families, family homes, children. You don't see children living in. Montreal's Chinatown, um, and one of the artists in, in the Who's Chinatown show, um, photographer, um, part of her series that she had done in the 70s, um, she photographed the children who were living in Montreal's Chinatown. Um, and so 
yeah, going back to Chicago, it's like that there are schools, there's elementary schools, there's, um, or elementary school, there's like, it's just very vibrant. And um, I, I'm not sure if that's something we can bring back to our Chinatown now. Um, yeah. The other thing too that, that I was fortunate to um, have been invited to do is a public art commission um, in, by the Quartier des Spectacles in the empty lot on Saint Laurent and um, René Levesque. I mean, it's been empty since I was a kid, so um, and you're always worried like what's going to happen to it. You know? um, but I think last year they they did something similar of. of um, Kind of making it to a public space, and this year, um, we—it's uh, a collaboration between many, many people, um, both with, within the Chinatown community um, and uh, myself. Um, and I conceived, uh, or I created, collaborated with Jean de La Sarre, a, a designer, and his team to create Plastic Soule. Um, and, and kind of my my background is a sneak peek. Um, so the public space, it's designed to be an intergenerational um, space and, and working with Eva, um, Eva Hu uh, and uh, you know, other, other partners um, who have created a night market kind of in way. Uh, and then that, that this time, like this year that people could the restaurants or the businesses would have their kiosks and uh, and then um, you know, there's picnic tables and chairs for people to rest and then kind of it's all formed like a with a, designed as concentric circles so this idea of the circle of sharing of community um, and as you go further in um, you know, there's also space for um, our, our seniors you know who like to just kind of chill and just sit under like shade so there's you know there's this tree basically the one behind me um where i created um what i call the uh, the wishing tree um and there's 1300 wishes um uh, uh, ranging from like footlook sao right so um and also happiness uh, so fortune uh, prosperity um but also health um, resilience and strength. So it's actually dedicated not just to our seniors, but to our community, to Chinatown, um, you know, wishes for its survival and growth. So this th this is like one way, and, and I'm, I'm hoping, because it's up until October and just, um, the we haven't officially launched it yet. Um, it's coming up soon. Um, but I'm hoping that this project will show, um, you know, our community, but like when I say our community now, I'm, I don't mean just the Chinatown community, like, like everybody who comes through Chinatown to see that there are other alternatives to just like real estate development, luxury condo. 